Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to go way back to the old landmark. All right. Stay in the service of the Lord. Amen. Y'all help us sing. Jesus, a man I long to know. among the poor. we'll know him. This is how we'll know him. He wears salvation on his brow. He
how good the Lord is. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. It is good for us to be here. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing. God has allowed us one more opportunity to assemble ourselves together and give glory and honor to his name. It's good for us to be here, and I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God showed us some kindness in allowing us to be here today. Will you tell your neighbor real quick, it could have been the other way? <clears throat> it's good for us to be here. I'm excited that God has been kind to us. This is the day that the Lord has made, <clears throat> and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to move forward with our order of service as it is printed. Minister Faye Efert is going to come and uh, lead us in a scriptural reading, followed by Dr. R.L. Patterson, who will come and lead us in prayer. Good morning. For our scripture reading, we'll call your attention to the first number of Psalms. And we'll read it in its entirety. May we all stand for the reading of the scripture. We'll read together. We'll start with verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated. May we pray. Eternal and everlasting, everlasting God. We have come, God, with joy. And above joy, we come with sadness. As we look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help coming from the Lord made the heaven and the earth. God our Father, we pray thy blessings upon this church, this congregation. Thank you, God, for your servant, Dr. T. L. Lewis, forty two years of labor. Realize, God, that he's not through yet, but he's just taken down the tent here from Bertha Nation. Now, God, we pray for covering. We pray for guidance. We pray, God, for the gift that you have given him that he has spread it across this nation. Thank you, Lord. We walk together. We talk together. We rode together. We was in meetings together. God is not over because your work is not over. The tent is just being taken down here where he served here for 42 years. 
Now, God, cover this congregation. Keep them together. Let them walk together, pray together, and lean on you, Lord, because we need you right now. We pray, God, that you will bless this day. Pray, God, that you will keep joy and happiness in Dr. Lewis and Sister Lewis and in the whole family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. Amen. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Sister Sylvia Middleton is coming now with our welcome. Good morning. Chava Honoree, Reverend Dr. Tommy L. Lewis. Reverend McCree, Reverend Woods, Reverend Patterson, Dr. Horkins, visitors, and the Bethel Nation. He gave some apostles and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Ephesians 4. 11 and 12. Today is a joyous occasion as we have gathered from near and far to look up the name which is above all names, Jesus, our Lord, and risen Savior, and to pay special tribute to God's ambassador, Reverend Dr. Tommy L. Lewis, who for 40 years has been apostle, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to countless people across these United States. Just look around. From where I stand, I see a great cloud of witnesses. Pastor, for 42 years, you willingly paid a high cost of commitment to the Bethel Nation and to this community. But none compares and has been as enduring as the life commitment you made to be a disciple for Christ. And you always encouraged us to exhibit a more Christ-like life on our Christian journey. When faced with life's tremendous challenges and adversities, you constantly reminded us of the untapped privilege of prayers and what a friend we have in Jesus. Pastor Lewis, your job surely could not have been easy. For a moment, I welcome each of us just to reflect and remember. Remember times when we were overwhelmed with circumstances hard to bear? Pastor Lewis was there. Celebrations of milestones reached in our life. He was right there. Right there with us leading, guiding, praying, and even sometimes fussing as he do. Whatever it took, to get us through, Pastor Lewis was right there. And so the Bethel Nation has truly been blessed by God to have you as have a mighty man of God, have a pastor for 42 years. Now, you have decided to take an extended vacation in the name of retirement. Of course, we know you would never retire from God's army. It is with outstretched arms and a great heart of love. We are humble that our friends have come to celebrate and give honor to Pastor Tommy L. Lewis for 42 years of Christian leadership here at Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, Pratt City, 1708 Spencer Avenue, Birmingham, Alabama, on this day, April 14, 2024. We welcome you and let us all praise the Lord. Thank you.
thank you, Lord, for bringing all of us from a mighty long ways. And at this time, would you please stand as our beloved pastor, Dr. T.L. Lewis, and our first lady, Sister Joyce Elaine Lewis, enter. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. 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 Keep clapping, y'all. He's been here for 42 years and has done a magnificent, magnificent work. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've said on countless occasions, and I'll continue to emphasize and say even more today, what a blessing it is to celebrate a retirement and not a home going. Bless his holy name. I'm so uh, just elated <clears throat> that as a church family, we didn't wait until we were rolling Pastor Lewis in. But we're able to celebrate while he's here, while he can see it and experience the expressions of love that we show to him. Amen. We've come to reflections in our pro program. Sister Kay Kalia McMillan, Sister Barbara Tate, and Brother Eddie Schamberger are going to come and share reflections, then the choir will come back. my Bethel Nation family and friends. Pastor Lewis, for 42 years, you have stood tall behind a pulpit and delivered the good news, a journey most of us would make if we had to walk in your shoes. There is no nine to five when working for the kingdom of heaven. Your job has always been 24-7. But God built you for the task because he knew you were last. At birth, he not only gave you a charge to fulfill, but also purpose through you he would live. Almost four and a half decades ago, God rooted you and your family in Mississippi town, illuminating a light that would shine the world all around. He gave you a vision not only changed the church, but communities just as much. The way wasn't easy. Sometimes the path seemed fruitless in search. But with God's guidance and divine favor, you led Bethel Nation to see the red, the blue, and purple church. While we can never pay you for this amazing race you have run, the most heartfelt thank you we give you for the all that you have done. Thank you for the missed dinners and celebrations we will never know. 
because of urgent, urgent calls that required you to go. Thank you for standing with and for us when we felt like we would fall. You shouldered our cries, burdens, and all. Thank you for fervent prayers over us, firmly believing that it is in God that we will always trust. Thank you for the thousands of miles traveled for being and being our rock while showing us that a pastor is a servant who cares for his flock. Most importantly, thank you for your uncompromising, unadulterated, unwavering, Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound teaching and preaching. Flowing from our heart is gratefulness. We are grateful for the things that you have done. We are grateful for the victories that we have won. I can go on and on and on and on about all the great work, but I'll say it like this. We are so grateful for all that you have done. Pastor Lewis and First Lady Joyce, wherever life, whatever may come at you in life, I declare as you have taught us, unto him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can act or think according to the power that worketh in us. And what do we declare? It's in us. That's what you'll tell us. It's in you. We will always love you, Pastor Lewis. Happy retirement. When I've done the best I can and my friends don't understand, may the service that I give speak for me. Giving honor to God, to our honoree, Pastor Lewis, and Sister Lady Lewis, I mean, uh, uh, Joyce and Lewis, I'm sorry, officers, members, and friends. It gives me great pleasure to stand here before you to say words of inspiration to uh, concerning Pastor Lewis. Now, I know we was asked to speak from three to five minutes, but just in case I go a little past 40, uh, five minutes, just know that I always like to include some song in my speeches. And after 42 years, I thought that it would be appropriate to speak. It, it's been back since when we was in the Blue Church. I was working here at Bethel. And every day around 4 o'clock, I will make my way to the front of the building because I know Pastor wanted me to go to the store. So when I went to the store to get his snack, I was also given the opportunity to sit in the office while he ate his snack. But as soon as the snack was finished and our conversations ended, I had to go right back to the back to do, do my work. So as I stand here and talk about service, if when you've given all the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed if friends don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well done. Now, I thought I'd go just a bit further with some singing, with some songs. I'm going to make an attempt to sing a little bit of songs to you guys. How do I say goodbye to what we had? The good time that made us laugh, they outweigh all the bad, I thought we'd get 
should be forever, but forever is gone away. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know where this road is going to lead. All I know is where we've been and what we've been through. And if we get to see tomorrow, I hope it's all worth the wait. It's so hard to say goodbye to you. That kind of faith, 
and it's mine. It's mine. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sure, harvest time. his holy name bless his holy name bless his holy name glory hallelujah amen 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 bless his holy name amen little miss uh Kalia McMillan sister Tate brother Schamberger uh thank you all so much for those reflections. That's right, give them a hand. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Uh, and we could surely go on for days uh, reflecting on the experiences and encounters and how Pastor Lewis has been present every step of the way in our lives. My mind went back, Brother <clears throat> Schamberger uh, was my first Sunday school teacher here at Bethel and I'm gonna go old school back when Miss Maddie Shedd was the superintendent yeah yeah if you came you know in the 90s or 2000s you don't remember that but Miss Maddie Shedd was the superintendent and then I don't want to get into calling names but uh, one of the most influential Sunday school teachers that I had here at Bethel is here today. He actually pastors a church in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, Reverend Pastor Willie Patterson is here today. Amen. Pastor Patterson was the first person, my Sunday school teacher, that I told that I felt like the Lord was calling me to preach. We're so happy to see him today. And again, not calling names, but always a pleasure to see Bishop Calvin Woods here. Amen. God bless you, Bishop. Amen. Civil rights icon. God bless you. Amen. And to all of you, our father's children, we've come up to preaching. We've come up to preaching. You ought to get excited about that. Amen. Perhaps you didn't look down and see who the preacher is for today, because if you knew who was preaching, and I said that we've come up to preaching, somebody would have got excited. Amen. One of the most influential preachers in my ministry, one of the most influential preachers of my generation, one of the most impactful preachers in the city of Birmingham and across this country has taken time out to come and celebrate with us on today. Uh, Dr. Timothy Justice Woods is one of the most prolific 
and profound preachers that God has called in this day and age. And I'm sure 90, 95, 99, perhaps all of us, 100% of us today, have heard a sermon or heard the preaching of Pastor Timothy Woods. But if by chance you are in that small minority that may not have experienced a message by Dr. Woods, buckle your seatbelt. Buckle your seatbelt. We are excited, and it is my pleasure and my honor to present our preacher for the day, the pastor of the Hopewell Baptist Church, North Birmingham, Alabama, Dr. Timothy J. Woods. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you now for this worship experience. All that have gone on here to four, we tell you thank you. Every song, every scripture, every supplication, every speaker, every service rendered, Lord, we tell you thank you. And now, Lord, as we come up to the sermon, I beg you to keep right on having your way touch now this awaiting congregation, grant them open ears and receptive hearts that they may hear not my word but your holy word. I beg you now to hide me behind your cross, cover me with your precious blood. Would you allow now the words of my mouth and the very meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight? O oh Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. Spirit of the living God, keep falling fresh on us. Fill me now, free me, and fit me that I might be used by you. To the end that sinners would be reached, the slowful will rededicate, and the saints would be revived. And I'll be extremely careful, ever so cautious, to give your name all of the glory, praise, and honor. In the strong name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray and ask these blessings of the Father and all of God's people said together, amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. I'm telling people everywhere I go that it doesn't matter what new language the church comes up with. Don't get rid of amen. amen. Uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who doeth not some things, but all things well. Uh, let me thank Pastor McCree for that most kind and undeserving introduction. Let's give him a hand for his presiding and leadership. Thank you so much, my brother. And of course, to all who grace the poor pit, it's so good to see each of them, uh, to Dr. Patterson uh, and all the others who are sharing, all the other ministers. We thank God for them. Uh, to my father and pastor uh, who is here. I thank God for him. And then also our honorees. Can we put our hands together for Dr. T.L. Lewis? And let's applaud this beautiful wife who looks like me, my little sister Joyce. Yes, yeah, she's older, but I'm the bigger brother. Uh, it is a joy to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm sweating because I ran from Hopewell's pulpit to this one, uh, I told him, I said, Doc, you understand I got a mortgage. I got to go pay the bills first, then come over there. <laughs> he said, I understand. And so I got here right on time. Uh, just let me say it's such a joy uh, to be here on this bittersweet occasion. Uh, it's difficult to think about Bethel in my day without thinking about Dr. Lewis. And, uh, and, and I know he's with the Lord, but just let me say, it's hard to think about Dr. Lewis and Bethel without thinking about Hargrove. Mm -hmm. Earl, as you know him. Uh, yeah, every time we called him affectionately Hargrove, and uh, every time uh, you saw one, you saw the other. I don't want to make you cry, bud. I know it. But uh, it's such a joy. And when I think about it, just before I preach, I promise I don't preach long, so that's the good news. But... Uh, when I uh, think about Bethel, 
Uh, I met Dr. Lewis before I started pastoring. Uh, I've been at Hopewell since 1987, uh, be about 38 years or so this year. And uh, I remember those early morning services. Uh, when I came in, I saw Schamberger there, uh, but one of my contemporaries uh, was his brother, Frank, uh, Frank Schamberger. Uh, Frank Schamberger, uh, myself, uh, Charles, uh, so many of us young preachers would try to crowd in that little bitty office. Uh, office wasn't bigger than a little bit, but we'd all crowd in there. Uh, every Sunday morning, then we look forward uh, to your grandmother's biscuits uh, <laughs> after the early morning service. Somebody know about Miss Olive and those biscuits. Uh, and, and, and anywhere Dr. Lewis was preaching, we were showing up. And uh, I think one way he and I connected, he was somewhere preaching, and I was behind him preaching, and he'd holler, and I'd holler. And then he'd holler, he'd say, and at the church, who was this little right? <laughs> Y'all know how he is. And uh, he has been so kind to me, made such a lasting impact on my ministry. Uh, in addition to my biological father, uh, he has exposed me to so much. So many people got to know me because of him. And he called, he said, Tim, baby, you started with me. You might as well come on, close me out. And, uh, and so I'm thankful to God that he allowed me to come uh, for this bitter sweet, amen, this bitter sweet situation. Just before I preach, I want to thank God for all my family that's here. Thank God for all of you. And then, of course, in that crowd is my significant other. Uh, we celebrate two years knowing each other today. It ain't about us, but happy anniversary, baby. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And uh, I was wondering, I was wondering uh, how could I say a word to uh, commend the pastor but yet challenge the people. And uh, the Lord led me to a passage in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and all you have to do is go down to the last verse and the last sentence. Acts chapter 2 the last verse and the last sentence and it simply says this and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved let me recapitulate that and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved I want to just talk about the first church. The first church. <laughs> I read this verse on any number of occasions. But for some reason, when I read it this particular time, something jumped out and stood out that had never stood out before. And it said that the Lord added to the church daily. And the first thing that says to me is this, if the Lord is going to add to the church daily, then our commitment cannot be weekly. Uh, uh, the, the, if the Lord is going to do some daily addition, then we need a daily commitment. I, I thought about this church because in Acts chapter 2, what we really have is the prototype, not just an example or model, but the prototype of the New Testament church. We, we have the birth of the New Testament church and I thought about the birth of this church and looked at how this church moved and functioned and I thought about Pastor Lewis and Bethel. I said, it's almost like a mirror. I've been around Pastor Lewis and Bethel for some 40 plus years. I said, it's almost like a mirror. When I look at the prototype, when I look at the New Testament church, I look at Bethel and Pastor Lewis, it's almost like looking in a mirror. Because this prototype gives us really an example of what the church ought to really look like. Well, well let's, let's not take for granted. Uh, don't forget Jesus 
had predicted that upon this rock I will build my church. That's future tense. He said that in the gospel, but on the day of Pentecost, the church was birthed and born. Uh, the church was born on Pentecost. You remember the background of Pentecost, don't you? Jesus had been crucified, and he was raised from the dead, and he hung around at the resurrection 40 days. And there was some intention in that. He hung around so those who saw him crucified could also see him alive. Uh, he hung around Dr. Hawkins as infallible proof, uh, indisputable proof. Uh, and then after 40 days, he steps on a cloud, goes back to heaven. And then 10 days later, uh, Pentecost comes. Uh, see, I don't think you got what I just said. Let me, let me, let me shake it up, uh, show you what I'm working with. You know what happened? In Matthew chapter 26, Jesus announces to his disciples that we're going to meet in Galilee. In Matthew chapter 27, he's crucified, dies, and is buried. Follow me now. Matthew 26, he sets the meeting. Chapter 27, uh, uh, he's died and he's buried. But in chapter 28, he shows up at the meeting. <laughs> Who else do you know that can set a meeting, die, and then get up and make the meeting? And it is in the context of this that Jesus says that I've got to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Holy Spirit shows up in Acts chapter 2. And it is, I contend, at the time that the Holy Spirit shows up that Luke gives us a clear portrait of what the church ought to look like. Uh -huh. You heard about the little boy that was sitting at the kitchen table. And he was sitting there, Dr. Lewis, he was drawing the portrait. He was drawing. And his father, his father said, says, boy, boy, what you doing? He was so into it. He said, I'm drawing a picture of God. His daddy said, boy, <laughs> don't nobody know what God looks like. He said, they will when I'm finished. <laughs> Can I tell you, when Luke gets finished with Acts chapter 2, we have a clear picture of what the church ought to look like. And I contend that what we see in Acts chapter 2 is what you've experienced here at Bethel in these 40 plus years. Now, let me do your quick running commentary. Remember, see, watch this. The first thing we see in the first church, watch this is supernatural power. Let the church say supernatural power. Well, watch this. Now, that's going to include the first 12 verses. I won't read it, but watch this. Several things happen in the first 12 verses that cannot be explained with the natural mind. Uh, uh, in the first verse, the, 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 the first thing that happened is, watch this, they all, watch this, heard something. They heard the sound as of a rushing by the wind. It was not a wind. It was the sound as, that word as is a quantitative word. It was the sound as a wind. They all were in a room and all of a sudden they heard a sound like a hurricane that filled the room. Watch this. They all heard a sound. Watch this. They all heard something. Then they all saw something. Yeah. The, the, the Bible said they saw cloven tongues as a fire. Yeah. They wasn't on fire, but they looked like fire. Yeah. Well, watch this. Come on, just compose with me. Here they are. And I've been in that upper room in the Holy Land. I've been there. And while they were in that room, all of a sudden, watch this. They just saw a giant tongue come from the ceiling, broke off into 120 pieces and set on the shoulder of each one of them. I wish somebody read this besides me. Watch this. They, they, they heard the sound of a wind. They, they saw something. They saw cloven tongues as a fire. Watch this. They heard something. They saw something. And they all said something. I wish somebody read this besides me. Now, now, watch this. Now, now, what did they say? The Bible said they began to speak in other. Let the church say other. Other 
other tongues, that word tongues, dialect. It, it, it is not cussing it, cussing it, gibberish. They were giving really literal words. They were communicating. They heard other languages. Now, Pastor, how is that supernatural? I'll tell you why. Come close. Because the amazing thing was, they said, we hear men speak in the native of our, the language of our native tongue. Can, can I make it plain for you? Here's what happened. For example, if you were there and you were from China, I'm there, I'm from America. You spoke Chinese, but when I heard it, it was American, it was English. I spoke English. And when you heard it, it was in your language. Everybody was there from every nation under the world, and everybody understood every word that was said, and nobody had taken any classes on languages. Super natural. Heard a sound. Saw a sight. Everybody said so. Supernatural. Watch it, watch it. Here, here, was, the, here was the main point. If the church is going to be the church, I don't care if we can have a prolific pastor, a profound preacher, dedicated deacons. We can have one of the greatest musical arts ministries in the world. We can have committed members, but without the power of the Holy Ghost. We just a whole nother club. We just another organization. And there ought to be something happening in your church that you can't explain through logic and reason. And I've been around Bethel long enough. I've seen some things happen around here you can't explain. I've seen the Lord bring you from where you were to where you are now. I've seen you build one church and the wind blew it down and you turn around, built another church. I've seen you impact lives. I've seen you make a difference in the community. It's because of the power of the Holy Ghost. I remember the day when folk would get out of cars and bring folding chairs. But look what the Lord has done. But now here was the main point. Well, here's the, main, the main point is this. The Bible says, here's what I like. Watch this. They all saw something. Watch this. They all heard something. And they all said something. Let the church say all. all. You see, one reason that they were so successful, watch this, is because they were unified. They were on one accord. <laughs> And can I tell you, that's what happens when the church is unified. You pack a strong punch when you're unified. You can make a difference and therefore you can rely on a power that's greater than human power. I, I, I used to love, during my day, we watched Charlie Brown. That was our cartoon, Charlie Brown. There's a scene where Charlie Brown was watching television and Lucy, you know Lucy was a little feisty. Lucy comes in, and she takes remote and just changes the television. Charlie Brown said, now what make you think? You can just walk in here and change the TV. She said, you see these five fingers? She said, separated, they're harmless. She said, but when they come together, they pack a mighty punch. Bethel, I dare you to come together. <laughs> to stick together you can make a difference when you get on one page and on one accord you can really make a difference the, the first thing that happened supernatural power and Bethel you didn't get this far of human powers and the problem with the Holy Ghost is this some folk the only thing you can relate to the Holy Ghost is the fact that he makes you shout but if your Holy Ghost don't do nothing but make you shout, that's suspicious. Because the same Holy Ghost that deal with devotion deals with devotion. The same Holy Ghost that deal with devotion ain't got nothing to do with commotion. He'll not only make you shout, he'll make you serve, he'll make you submit, he'll make you so cease, he'll lead you and guide you. Well, well, watch this, number one, number one, verses one through twelve, supernatural power. Watch this. But verses 13 down through about 41-ish, watch this. You know the other, other thing that the first church had? Scriptural preaching. You, you know what the Bible said? Watch this. 
the, the Bible says, now watch this, when all this stuff took place, now you got to imagine, they in this upper room, right? And, and, and all of a sudden, you hear the sound like a hurricane. And, and you look and you see tongues of fire sitting on folks' shoulders. And you hear folks speaking language they don't know nothing about. And you know what happened? The crowd came running to see it. <laughs> this was not quiet. Everybody came in. You know what they said? Oh, they drunk. <laughs> Peter said, yes and no. <laughs> We're not drunk as you suppose. He said, it ain't time yet. The state store ain't open yet. <laughs> But we on some different wine. And the Bible says Peter stood up and began preaching to those same folk who crowded around him, the same folk who had crucified Jesus. And what Peter gave was some scripture preaching. Why do you call it scripture preaching? Two reasons. Number one, because he gives a simple template and formula. First of all, he quoted two, two Old Testament passages. He gave a quotation. And then he gave interpretation. He gave two Old Testament passages. And then he expounds on those passages. That's what you call scriptural preaching. Now, 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 now the first thing that got me is this. First thing that got me is that the Bible says Peter stood up. Last time we saw Peter, he wasn't standing up. <laughs> he was being a coward. Last time we saw Peter, they said, aren't you with him? Peter said, I don't know it. <laughs> Peter said, look, if they beat Jesus, they're going to stomp a mud hole in me. Peter said, I'm not with him. Peter denied him. And then he said, go tell Peter and my disciples. The last time we saw Peter, Peter was a coward. He was afraid, but what has happened? I'll tell you what happened. When the Holy Ghost get a hold of you, you'll go from being a coward to being courageous. And Peter stood up. One thing that has blessed Bethel for these years, you've always had a courageous leader. You've had a leader that wasn't scared of nothing and nobody. You've had a leader that would always speak truth to power. Yeah, Peter stood up and started preaching. You know what Peter told them? You the ones crucified Jesus. Peter stood up. Now watch this. Let me summarize Peter's sermon. Watch this. First of all, his sermon uh, dealt with, watch this, he communicated the gospel. Peter said, I ain't got nothing new. He talked about death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. He talked about it. He, he gave communication. Watch this. But communication, watch this, led to, you're not going to like, confrontation. <laughs> Only thing about the gospel, it'll confront you. Kind of make you uncomfortable. Because Peter pointed his hand in their face and said, you the ones who killed him? Here the four, Peter was afraid, but Peter said, you killed Jesus. Confrontation. Folk don't like to be confronted. With this new age preacher, we just all want to be complimented. <laughs> I want to tell you, you got a blessing coming in three days. Yeah, we, we, nobody want to be confronted with your lifestyle. <laughs> nobody want to be accountable for anything. But confrontation. Watch this. Then that led to conviction. <laughs> know what the Bible says? It pricked their hearts. Uh, it pricked their hearts. People don't like to go to church when somebody going to prick their hearts. I want to go to a church where they're going to tell me what I want to hear. I want my ears tickled. I don't need nobody challenging me. I had a rough week all week. But the word of God, when preached properly, will challenge you and even convict you. But watch this. Confrontation. Conviction. But... It led to conversion. <laughs> the Bible said that day, I wish somebody read it besides me, about 3,000 souls were added to the church. Is that anybody in Bethel that's been converted under the preaching of Dr. Lewis? Anybody in Bethel that's been convicted, but you're better today because you heard the word of God. <laughs> what the Lord is calling for today is scriptural preaching. Now let me say this. Let me say this. I'm I'm, I'm pretty much done because I, I see how your appetite is. I'm pretty much done. But 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 but, but he, 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 here's what here, here's what I've discovered. Now, watch, watch, here's what I've discovered. Now, watch, I, I've discovered this. I've discovered this. Uh, everybody trying to be politically correct, even from the pulpit. 
and, and, and almost anything you want to hear, you can get it. Just decide where you're going to go. But I come to tell you that we're in a day and a time where what the world needs now more than anything is scriptural preaching. More than anything. And I don't care what the Congress does. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. I got a message for you today. And that is this. The flag ain't the cross. The Constitution ain't the Bible. And the Supreme Court sure ain't God. Because the last time I checked, the grass will wither. The flower will fade. But the word of our God is going to stand forever. We need some scriptural preaching. May not be popular, but God has given you for 40 plus years scriptural preaching. You heard the story about the two guys that were actors, they were trying to get a part in a play. I know you heard about it. Uh, they had to go before three judges. And when they went before those three judges, they had to get in the character and set their part. The first one stepped up. Man, listen, he was articulate. I, I, I mean, he knew, I mean, how to pronounce and announce. I, I, I'm talking about he stopped at the period, he paused at the commas, he modulated at the exclamation points. I mean, he had that thing down. Back! And when he got through the judge, he said, listen, don't leave. Just stand, stand to the side. We got one more, one more, one more actor. The second actor came up. He did his part. He was just all right. He was all right. He was all right. He was all right. He was all right. And so they said, okay, give us a minute. So the three judges got together to deliberate. They said, what you think? Judge number one said, listen, hands down, I want the first actor. Did you hear how articulate that guy was? Did you hear how that guy was poised and how he stood erect? He said, he said contestant number one. Judge number two says, yeah, me too, man. I don't even see what we're discussing. But then judge number three says, no, not for me. He said, I like contestant number two. They said, why? He said, for one reason. He stuck with the script. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you the Lord looking for somebody that's going to stick with the script. And the last time I checked the script, he died according to the script. He, he was buried according to the script. He raised the third day. Somebody need to stick with Here's the last thing. The first church, they had supernatural power. First church, they, they had scriptural preaching. But the last thing is, the first church, here it is, had spiritual programs. <laughs> Boy, I wish I would have brought a happy meal with me today. Had, 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 had spiritual programs. Now watch this. When, when I say spiritual program, watch this. You know what the Bible says there about uh, uh, verse, verse 42? Pick up a verse. The rest of it. They were 42 down to 47. First of all, it says, watch this, the first program was called, can I name it this, Christian Education. <laughs> b b because here's what it says in verse 42. And they that were baptized continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You know what I like about this church? Doctrine word means teaching. They not only shouted, they studied. <laughs> They shouted straight to Bible study. <laughs> they shouted straight to Sunday school. And they continued steadfastly. This church was serious about the apostles' doctrine. And the word steadfastly means that they were zoned in. They were adamant about learning and not just about having a good time. And Bethel Baptist Church has always had a strong Christian education program. For well, I can remember, they've always had programs to develop you, programs to help you grow. You've always had that as long as I've been around. They, they were serious about growing. You got a lot of people uh, who will come to business meeting, but they don't come to Bible study. They'll come for this, but they won't come for Sunday school. <laughs> and, and they wonder why when the storm of life starts blowing, they can't handle that. They ain't got nothing to stand on. But the last time I checked, if you meditate on the word, you'll be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. But you got to spend some time in developing your spirituality. Watch this. The first program they had was Christian education. Second program they had was Christian edification. You know what the Bible says? That they went from house to house. 
They had little small group meetings. Breaking their bread with gladness. They prayed for each other. I mean, they ate with one another. They fellowship. And then watch this. If anybody had a need, they sold their possessions and gave it to the apostles. And they blessed the folk that had needs. Well, Bethel has always had some community programs. <laughs> Bethel has always had programs that involved the community. Always had programs where children could come after school, where people can come and learn different development arts. I'm saying that they had a program that edified one another. And that's what Bethel has always done, and that's what the first church did. But you know, nowadays we got to be careful. But because if you ain't careful, rather than building up one another, we'll spend our time tearing down one another. Can I tell you, I, I, you know, you've got a lot of people who, who come to church, but they don't want to engage. Oh, I'm coming to church, but I ain't finna get in there, and I ain't finna do nothing. Yeah, I just come and go. And they brag on that. That's nothing to brag on. Can, kind of remind me when I played college football at JSU. L listen, listen, we had a, a hangout after every football game. You know what a hangout was? The parking lot of McDonald's. Uh, most times as college students, we didn't have no money. But that was cool because the hangout had one item on the agenda. Just get there. You ain't got to do nothing, ain't got to send nothing, ain't got to buy nothing, ain't got to just get there. And that's how most folk treat the church. <laughs> they, they just hang out. They ain't going to send nothing, they ain't going to do nothing, they ain't going to give nothing, they ain't going to help nothing, they ain't going to hurt nothing. But if we're going to edify one another, we got to get involved and help build the church. I'm done. Now watch this. Here's the last program. The last program. They had scripture program. Education, edification. But the last program was evangelization. The, the, the Bible said that the Lord added to the church weekly. Huh? The Lord added to the church monthly. The Lord added to the church quarterly. That the Lord added to the church annually. How in the world did the Lord add to the church every day? <laughs> Can I tell you that that's what we got to do? We, we can't drop the ball right here. Because notice who did the addition. <laughs> the Lord added. <laughs> There's a difference in folk joining and the Lord added. <laughs> When the Lord adds to the church, you talking about a sinner being saved. But we so busy proselyting and reaching out to other folk members that we ain't spending time reaching out to those who don't even know the Lord Jesus Christ. We too busy trying to be keepers of the aquarium than fishers of men. The Lord added daily. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm going to turn the corner in a minute. Watch this. You know how the Lord added daily? It has a direct connection to do with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Before he left, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Not you might but you shall open your mouth. <laughs> you shall be witnesses of me. Once the Holy Ghost come upon you, it's going to make you talk about a man named Jesus. He said, you're going to talk about me ever this, that the Holy Ghost is upon you, and that when you open your mouth, my name ought to come out. And, and here is what they did. Here's what they did. The Bible said that they started in the upper room with 120. And then the Bible says, in the last verse, the Lord added daily. But, but then watch this. Then you go to Acts chapter 4 or 5. Then you got 4,000 at one time. And then by the time you get to Acts chapter 6, watch out. We move from addition to multiplication. That's why we need y'all, Deacon Moore, because the number of the disciples was multiplied. <laughs> How in the world what was the Lord adding to the church? On a daily basis. I, I'll tell you how because it's found in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. 
He said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he said, you shall be witnesses. Now understand that what that means is witnessing is not something you do. Uh, but witnessing is who you are. Uh, and what that means is if you are a witness, then every chance you get, somebody ought to hear the name of Jesus. Uh, and if people are going to be saved daily, uh, then somebody in Bethel, uh, you can't wait to Sunday. Uh, on your job you gotta talk about jesus in your community uh, you gotta talk about jesus if folk gonna be saved uh, on a daily basis then somebody has got to open your mouth and tell the world who jesus is uh, can i put it like this you ought to be like forrest gump every time they come sit on your row they ought to have to hear your story did you see the movie forrest gump when they sat next to him he initiated the conversation and started talking about his mama and just like Forrest talked about his mother you gotta talk about Jesus and the thing I like about it you don't have to be an expert just tell them what he's done for you can you tell somebody it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he will do the same thing for you. Is there anybody in here that's going to be a witness? You got to go tell it on the mountains, over the hill, and then everywhere. You got to go tell it on the mountain. Tell them that Jesus Christ still born. Is there anybody here that know Jesus is still alive? He's still able to turn things around. He's still able to make ways out of no ways. Is there anybody here that can thank God for the first church? Thank God for supernatural power. Is there anybody in Bethel that knows something about the Holy Ghost? Is there anybody here ever felt the Spirit move on the altar of your heart? The Lord, somebody know you will. The Lord, won't he move? Won't he move supernatural power? But before Dr. Lewis leave, can you help me do something? Point your hand at Dr. Lewis and say, Dr. Lewis, thank you for scriptural preaching. Thank you, Reverend, for telling us that he died. Thank you, Reverend, for giving us hope and telling us that he rose. Can you look at Dr. Lewis and say, well done. Well done. Well done. Ah, yeah. ah, yeah. What is so well known? If when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He will. I said he will. He will. He will. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Won't he understand? Yes. Yeah. I'm through preaching. Can you help me rejoice? I know it's a bittersweet day, but can you help me rejoice? Can you tell the Lord thank you for all you've done through Dr. Lewis? Can you 
tell him thank you for the ways you made. Thank you for the door you opened. Thank you. He's buried your family. He got your children out of jail. He came and stood by your side. He's been there with you. Can you tell the Lord thank you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Weep in May. Endure for a night. But can somebody help me say joy? Help me say joy. 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 Joy will, I, I, I know joy will. Won't it come in the morning? I said, won't it come in the morning? Pastor Lewis, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. But thank God that you're still here. We ain't rolling you down. We're still looking at you. You know what that means? He'd been good. Hadn't it been good? Yeah. Oh. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The first church, Bethel Church, mirrors the first church. And we got to tell Dr. Lewis, thank you. I'm going to my seat, Shell. I'm going to my seat, but let me say this. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I had some weary days. And some lonely nights. But when I look around and when I think things over here's my conclusion all of my good days they outweigh my bad days so I I won't complain let me just get to the chase God has been good to me He's been so good to me. Better than this world or you could ever be. He been good. He been good. He been good to me. Late in the midnight hour, he drives my tears away. Turn my midnights in the day. So rather than complaining, I'm going to lift my hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Man, our ministers and deacons are coming. Our ministers and deacons are coming. The doors of the church are open today. As our ministers and deacons come, the doors of the church are open. Oh, what a word, what a word, what a word. What a word from the Lord. If you're here today and you have not come to know Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior, this moment 
this time is just for you. If you're here today, you haven't come to know Christ, you have not been baptized, this moment, this hour is just for you. Maybe you're here today and you don't have that community of reliable others that we all need in our lives. Bethel is a wonderful place to make your church home. It's a wonderful place to make your church family. If you're here today, you don't know Christ, you don't have a church family, won't you get out of your seat and make your way down the aisle this morning? Won't you come today? Jesus said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. If the Lord is speaking to you right now, won't you come? The door of the church is open. Bless his holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. God bless you. Anybody been blessed? Amen. Amen. Thank God for his word on today. Thank God for uh, this preacher, uh, Dr. Woods, uh, ministering to us on today. And thank God for this 
celebration of service. Dr. Lewis, we've uh, come to the point in our program where we're going to have uh, ministry and special presentations, and Minister Geraldine Moore is going to come and lead us in this effort, but I'm going to take just a moment, a point of privilege, while I prepare uh, the gift from my wife and I. We were reflecting a couple of days ago, and I said it earlier, that if uh, we had a line of individuals to come and share reflections of experiences where Pastor Lewis has been present. The line would take days for us to share. But I want to take just a moment since I have this opportunity. Ten years ago, um, 2014, I was lying in a hospital bed uh, after triple bypass open heart surgery the first person that was standing next to my bed when I opened my eyes in so much pain, I didn't even know that I was still alive. My wife, my daughter, and Pastor Lewis was standing there present. My wife tells me, because I don't remember much of it, but she tells me that my daughter broke down in tears and the man that stood and lifted my daughter in that most difficult time of our lives is Dr. T.L. Lewis. So, amen, amen. And we could go on for days with all of the lives that have been impacted across this congregation across this city, across this county, by the ministry of Pastor Lewis. And we just thank God for him today. We thank God for his ministry. We thank God for his life and his legacy. And we're happy and excited today that we're celebrating it while he can hear. Amen. Amen. We're honoring him while he can actually hear and see what's going on we're not waiting to cry over dirt we're not waiting to cry over flowers no we're going to celebrate right now so as we prepare minister moore is going to come <laughs> minister moore is going to come and lead us in this time of our special presentation thank you pastor mccree and to uh reverend Timothy Woods and to Reverend Victor Harkins, who's in our audience, and to Pastor Lewis. And <laughs> you can sit down. You can sit for a minute. You can sit. Uh, Shady Grove Church is in this section over here. Your home, with Shady Grove, please stand up. <laughs> Okay, to, be, to begin our special presentation, we have a video that we would like to share with you. Uh, Brother Tate, we are ready. Some of you might have already seen it or heard it, but for those who have not, we wanted to share it today. Today, to pay honor and tribute to the extraordinary career of a faithful servant leader, 
the Reverend Dr. Tommy L. Lewis as we celebrate his retirement as the senior pastor of Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Pratt City after 42 years of service. Throughout his life, Pastor T.L. Lewis has poured into his community as both a faith leader and a public servant. After answering the call to ministry in 1973, he led several congregations before settling at Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Pratt City in 1982. As pastor, Dr. T.L. Lewis worked to expand Bethel's congregation and deepen its impact by establishing a new worship center in 1990, which included a sanctuary with a seating capacity of 1,800. And he commissioned a family life center, which became the Bethel Community Life Center that garnered thousands of dollars from both the state and federal to support community development and educational initiatives. After a tornado destroyed these buildings in 2011, it was Pastor Lewis who rallied the community together and rebuilt a beautiful new sanctuary that was completed and consecrated on August 24th, 2014. On a personal note, I've been blessed to call Pastor Lewis a dear friend and a trusted spiritual leader and a mentor. It's because of him that so much has changed in Pratt City and Birmingham, and we are eternally grateful. I ask my colleagues to join me in congratulating Dr. T.L. Lewis on re his retirement as senior pastor at Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Pratt City after 42 years. Amen, amen. It is said that a prophet sometimes is without honor at home, but we know the whole world celebrates our pastor, Dr. Lewis. I'm gonna ask Sister George O'Neill, who has been the co-chair of our Pastoral Retirement Committee, and I'm going to give my remarks, my appreciation, as well as some other presentations uh, while I'm standing. On behalf of the Pastors Retirement Committee, I would like to thank each of you for your support, for your finances, prayers, and labor of love, without each of you, this weekend would not have been successful as it has been. A special thanks to Pastor Thomas Jefferson Rogers and the staff of New Bethlehem Baptist Church for their hospitality in hosting our beautiful banquet on Friday night. To all of our banquet hostesses and the sanctuary choir, musicians, we say thank you. To all the program participants for both the banquet and the worship service today, we say thank you. To our culinary ministry who have prepared the refreshments for the reception immediately following our worship service, we say thank you. To our church staff, Sister Yvette Miller, Sister Rapunzel Maxwell, and Brother Leroy Cunningham, we say thank you. And last but not least, at this time, I would like to ask the Pastoral Retirement Committee, who is listed in the back of your program, to please stand, and let's give them all a round of applause. Committee, please stand. I want to extend my gratitude to each of you for your outstanding dedication and hard work. Your tireless efforts and unwavering commitment have made a significant impact on the activities this weekend. Your passion and enthusiasm have inspired me, and I am continuously impressed by your professionalism and dedication to excellence. It is through our collective efforts and collaboration that we have been able to reach our goal. Please know that your contributions have been invaluable and your commitment was deeply appreciated as I was honored to work alongside each of you. To Mother Carter, would you please stand? And Sister Anderson, I don't know if Sister Block is here, but would you get Mother Carter's basket for me, please? To Mother Carter, we want to honor and celebrate you. Your presence in our lives have been a source of inspiration, wisdom, and love. And we are eternally grateful. You have played a vital role in shaping and nurturing the person that Pastor Lewis is. Thank you for being there and giving up your home to move in with him when he needed you most to take care of him and Rhonda. 
This allowed him to fulfill his ministerial responsibilities. You have sacrificed much to support his calling in the ministry. On behalf of Bethel Baptist Church, we present you with this basket filled with love. Thank you, Mother Carter. to Minister Joyce Elaine Lewis. As the wife of our beloved pastor, you have played a valuable role in his ministry. Your prayers and support have helped him navigate the joys and challenges of pastoral leadership. Your behind the scenes support and your visible presence by his side amplifies what it means to be a true partner in ministry. Thank you for your commitment in supporting Pastor Lewis. Your strength, grace, and faithfulness are a testament to the power of love and partnership in ministry. On behalf of Bethel Baptist Church, we present you with these flowers. And last but not least, to our pastor. <laughs> Ms. Georgie, did you have something you want to say? <laughs> to Pastor Lewis, uh, you have been out covering for 42 years. And my family is covering for over 35 years. I know Bryce kept you busy. But <laughs> yeah, servant, a leader, diplomat, preacher, teacher, pastor, shepherd, servant, and prisoner of the Lord, all of these things and much more, uh, you deserve this. So on behalf of the church, Bethel Baptist Church, we present you with this with this token of our appreciation. Uh. <laughs> and thank you so much for 42 years of service. Uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor, that is a partial, partial donation, partial. partial donation from the proceeds from the ad book as well as the uh, banquet. Uh, we have to true up what we collected on Friday night, and so you will begin another gift uh, sometime this week. But Pastor, as you prepare to step in a new season of life, we want to express our heartfelt gratitude for your dedicated service to our church community for over the past 42 years. Throughout your time as our pastor, you have been a beacon of light guiding us. Your sermons have challenged us, uplifted us, and inspired us to grow closer to God. Your pastoral care and presence during both the joyful and difficult moments of our life have been a source of comfort and strength. Thank you, Pastor, for your timeless dedication to shepherding our congregation and pouring into our lives. Your legacy of love, service, and commitment will be forever etched in our hearts and minds. As you embark upon this new chapter of your journey, may you be blessed with abundance, joy, peace, and fulfillment. May God continue to guide and bless you in everything that you do. Though we will miss you as pastor, your seeds of faith and love that you have planted in our hearts will continue to bear fruit for years to come. From Reverend Robert Smith, Jr., who served as pastor before you, from Reverend Robert Smith, Jr. and President Cynthia Smith, we will present you with this love offering. And while I'm standing from Deacon Alvin Moore and I, we also present you with a love offering. On behalf of the retirement committee, we thank all of you who purchased banquet tickets and ads. Amen. And now we're back into the, we're back into the hands of 
Minister McCree, as all of our ministries get ready to come, and those were special presentations. Amen. We're going to take just a few moments for special presentations from uh, our ministries and auxiliaries. I'm going to take just a moment for you to come now. Amen. And we're going to prepare. We have our announcements. Do we have announcements today, Brother Tate? Okay. Okay. Come on, Deacon Moore is going to, going to come. That's an idiot. While they're coming, just let me say from the Hope World Missionary Baptist Church, uh, nice see for you, Pastor. Thanks for everything you've done for us. Thank you so much.
friend to a great leader to an example to so many I've had the privilege for a little more than a decade to have the honor of serving as your pastor across this land no matter where we go and Whenever the time is given that God affords the opportunity, you have not one time failed to recognize me, 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 as your pastor. It ought to be the other way around. But God did that. God did that. It has been a challenge for me that I have relished, that I pray daily, that I can be in your life as your pastor, what you need in a pastor. And it is my prayer that I've not failed. I thought it not robbery. We talked to this people just a few weeks ago, and this is just a representation that I asked them that they would honor me as we honor you today. That we would shut service down. That we wouldn't have worship at our church today. That they would come this way and we would worship here. Not to sit on the pulpit, not to have my name called, but to sit with them. And thank you for a powerful word, Dr. Thank Tim Woods. Oh, I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that Shady Grove loves you. And we honor you. And we thank God for you. Lady Joyce, we thank God for you. And we welcome you into our lives. You are my daughter as well. And I thank God for you. So on the behalf of the Shady Grove Missionary Baptist Church, uh, there's a couple of zeros behind uh, this digit that's here, and then there's a decimal point that follows, and then a couple more zeros. So I'll, 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 I'll let you have this, and you can do what needs to be done with it. But that's what it is. That's what it is. And that's from your church, the Shady Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Amen.
Amen. Amen. So let's go to our newsroom. What a blessing it is to see the second Sunday in April, April 14th, 2024. Good morning and welcome to Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, Pratt City, where we are celebrating the retirement of our beloved pastor, Pastor T.L. Lewis, after 42 years of unwavering service to Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, Pratt City. We hope that something was said today to carry you through your week. If you are in search of a church home, we ask that you consider Bethel because here at Bethel, we are a Thank you all for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you again on next Sunday. Bethel Nation, don't forget to pay your tithes, offering, and any type of giving. We have three different ways to give, as shown on screen. You can pay using our website of BethelPrexCity.org. You can text us to give or drop it off or mail it to our church office. Our Let's Stay Connected prayer call is still going strong. It happens each weekday morning beginning at 7 a.m. We have two lines that you can use and the access code does work for both lines. Attention parents and grandparents, youth choir rehearsal will be this coming Thursday, April 18th at 6 p.m. All children are asked to participate. Please see Sister Camlin Easley or Sister Barbara Anderson for more information. Bread and Recreational Development Incorporated extends a sincere thank you to all who joined the estate planning session on last Monday. We will continue those sessions in the month of May. Join Bread on tomorrow at 10 a.m. right here at the church to learn more about Zoom and join them on Thursdays at 6 p.m. for walking. There will be a church informational meeting on Monday, April 22nd, 2024 at 6 p.m. in the church sanctuary. Happy birthday to everyone who's celebrating a birthday this upcoming week of April 14th through April 20th. We hope that you enjoy your special day. These announcements have been brought to you by Sister Bianca Moore of the Greeters Ministry by way of the Bethel Nation Newsroom. The Greeters Ministry and the Bethel Nation Newsroom were both established under the visionary leadership and pastoralship of Dr. T.L. Lewis. Pastor Lewis, thank you for your visionary leadership. We have been most honored to serve under your care. Have a great day, Bethel Nation. Amen. Amen. We're going to move quickly. We're going to prepare our hearts to give. First of all, uh, we're going to prepare to give our tithes and our offerings on this morning. And then each of us who are a part of Bethel Nation, we were asked to give a uh, $100 love offering to Pastor Lewis uh, on this day of his retirement. So. <music> Just lift your hand and we'll make sure we get that to you. Amen. One more over here to my far right. Amen. Amen. All right, he coming. Amen. Now, if you prefer to give digitally or virtually, 
The QR code is on the screen. Use your phone and uh, read that QR code, and you can give virtually over the digital platform. Amen. All right, let's stand. Let's stand. Let's prepare our hearts to give. Let's stand. Bless his holy name. If you have your tithe and your offering ready, just come on and make your way down to the front. And let's sow that seed. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. <laughs> Amen. As you return to your seats, as you return to your seats, please don't leave. We do have a reception immediately following worship. We prepared. Uh, the reception immediately following worship, just to fellowship, amen, and we can continue to share our words of encouragement and exp expressions of love with Pastor Lewis and family, amen. Amen. Let's pray over our offering. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for every gift. We thank you for every giver. Bless now and multiply these gifts in this ministry and in the lives of every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, the hour is far spent. We're getting ready to go home. Uh, but perhaps... For the last time, let me have the honor of presenting the pastor of Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, my spiritual father, and his wife, Dr. T.L. Lewis, and Lady Joyce. Let's give them a hand as they come. Let's stand and give them a hand as they come. While you're standing, just remain standing. Our time is spent. There was much I can say, but I'll cut through the chase. One thing, two words, thank you. 
thank you. My pleasure has been that God allowed me to come to this place and for 42 years, which some of y'all know is 43, but I couldn't come when you called me in October. I couldn't come to January, but we made it. God bless all of you, and today, what a signal honor it is. My home church is here, and my pastor. I thank God. Bethel, one more time, help me say thank you to them. Wow. Now, um, we got something else going. What else? What, what do we do after this? Reception? Where is that over in the fellowship hall? All right. God bless all of you. Now, y'all know normally on Sunday we would have been gone. We would have been gone. I'm glad to see y'all. I told my wife, I said, I'm just wondering where they are today. Because I know where you sit. And I told y'all, for many of you in this room, if I went blind, I, I'd be able to tell if you was at church or not. Because you sit in the same place. God bless you. Thank you all so much. Elaine, come on, say something real quick, because this is it. We got to go now. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I want to take the time out to thank each and every one of you for all that you've done. For my husband and I, and I personally want to say thank you. Every first lady can't say this, but I, the two years that I've been here, I've had no problem. You all only showed me love and respect, and I just thank you. And I ask that you keep us in our prayers. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in his eyes. And I love you, and thank you. Very good. Thank you, sweetie. All right, God bless all of you. Fellas, pastor, going to be praying for y'all every day. I've already begun, and we get to where it needs to be, and God is going to let you do it. Alvin, stay prayed up, please, because doing what you're doing now, the, the enemy is going to really be mad, but we're going to pray for you and bring you through. God bless all of you. I think I've said enough. Now, we, we're going over here to eat something, I guess. All right. Well, but. It is. Yeah, I know he's supposed to be dead. I went to, I was at the funeral. Now, don't, don't y'all start moving around like, like, Suspiciously, because I, I don't see like I used to see. Here we go. This will be it. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in each of us. So Bethel Nation, I'm going to call for it today. So Bethel Nation, what is your declaration? Everything I hope for, believe God for. God has put it in me. I can accomplish whatever it is God has assigned me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen.